Good evening everyone, this is a toilet install, or rather a toilet reinstall at my local surgery in town and um, this is a little bit of an odd job to be honest. It came about when the uh, powers that be reached out to myself as the company they were dealing with dropped out or were not unable to comply with the with the order to build this wall as you see here and then refit the toilets for them and uh, they were wondering whether I could help them out and so I basically turned up to this room a few weeks prior and removed the toilets and isolated them and said uh, well call me when whatever it is that you're doing is done because I thought they were having the, the walls actually like plastered or painted or that they were going to fit boarding to the actual walls to make them easy to clean or something like that. They weren't very clear about what it, what it was that they were doing and um, I'm not sure whether it's because they didn't know or what, but basically I turned up at the job and was confronted with this flat, basically, piece of box work here, like you'd get in, you know, any other public toilet. And they were like, oh, we want you to refit the old toilet to that. And I said to them, well, don't you want like a wall hung pan with the frame and all the rest of it so it's really easy to clean? And they were like, no. And um, to be fair, I did say to them, there's nothing wrong with the old toilets, but uh, they're not that great. But anyways, it wasn't in the budget to do. So this is uh, the job that you now see. Um, obviously, I just turned up and that's all I had to do was just sort of rock and roll. This had already been built for me the day prior and I had two of these to do, both exactly the same. And that's that and just rock on. Uh, using black soil fittings here just because um, I know all the people with uh, OCD about the colour of their fittings will hate it if I put a black elbow onto a grey bit of pipe there but uh, also it did just happen to be what I had in the van at the time and so that's what we, what we used and uh, it's quite a simple job it's a little bit fiddly and obviously the pressure's on because if you you know, drill the boards wrong, then you've got to buy another sheet and that stuff. It's not wood, it's plastic. It's just solid plastic sheet sheeting. And uh, it's quite expensive. If you've ever done commercial work of this nature, you'll know that it's, you know, it's not cheap. And so it is that the, the toilets were reinstalled. Now, there's not a lot to just drilling and cutting this all correctly. To, so that it all matches up. I had an advantage because the soil pipe had to be notched into the bottom like that. So immediately I didn't have to determine the height or the center of the soil pipe. All I had to do was lower the board down as if I was slotting it on and I could get a pretty accurate idea of where it was, I was gonna have to cut my hole. And go from there really. We've got the classic, as you can see here, the classic plumber's workbench, which is uh, to work on the toilet that it is that you're installing. I know a lot of people do it, but it doesn't make it right, does it? But no. And um, yeah, and the most of this job, you're just gonna see my backside in it all the while, but it couldn't be helped. Uh, that's all I've got to say about that. Uh, the soil's all I've got. It does a good job of cutting soil pipe. It's what I use all the time if I, if I can to cut soil pipe obviously there's situations where you have to in a tight area have to use a recip saw or even an old-fashioned wood saw heaven forbid to cut soil pipe but I tend to find that this is the most expedient and still pretty much the most neat way of doing it like you can cut a pretty square bit of pipe like you see there no issue at all the only thing I get hung up on now is uh, chamfering it because I only have a little file as you see here to chamfer it with and I want one of those drill attachments that all of the uh, all of the really high speed tricked out people have that it's basically like a giant socket basically and you just you wind it onto your drill and then you put it on the end of the pipe and it just sharpens it like it sharpens a pencil and um, chamfers it in a lot less time than this has taken so Obviously, that's a major inefficiency, but it will be corrected once the funds become available to get hold of that piece of equipment. You know, everything's a balance. How much soil work am I realistically going to do to justify buying that? 
it's probably not going to be viable for you know at least another six months because I'm just not going to do it unless I have a massive job come in where I've got to replace like the soil stack on the side of the house or something but um, barring that I don't think I'll get one um, what else is there to say about this oh yes working in um, larger buildings like this uh, for those of you that don't know you have to carry a lot higher public liability insurance and this was the main reason I got this job to be honest because in the district there's not a lot of people that carry five million or more in public liability which is what you need to work in a building of this type and that's sort of a leftover from the time where I looked after a lot of schools and um, I've just sort of held on to it it's become very advantageous it can open a lot of doors for you but as I've come to you know know now at least that it uh, working for schools and educational authorities is uh, kind of a pain in the backside they want everything done very cheaply they take ages to pay and I always say to them how can you justify taking 30 or 60 or 90 days to pay me when you walk into the supermarket and you have to pay for the goods that you want before you leave the building it's not you know it's not the done thing so why do you think it's it's acceptable to do it to me and that's the main reason I got out of doing this sort of work however the people that I was dealing with are approved uh, and um, you know they pay me promptly and that's my guiding star these days you know not to put too fine of a point on it if you're a self-employed person you are a mercenary and you mercenaries get paid for the work they do immediately and uh, if somebody tries to mess you about whether it's a person or a large organization you don't stand for it now have i been done by private people of course i've i've paid i've learned a very expensive lesson over the past year about you know doing private work but it is the nature of the beast but it is nice to come back to this sort of work every once in a while and this was one that i could record obviously i've not taped anything i've done in a school because it's for all of all effects and purposes a camera free zone obviously you can use your mobile but you're not technically supposed to and it's uh, again a bit of a pain they want everything done so quickly and cheaply that there's just no time in the program to do any of it and um, yeah I, I'm sure whatever I'm saying is irrelevant I think I'm just showing how I cut that to the correct length and I thought that was uh, jolly good and I feel very proud of myself there I'm sure um, and yeah getting back to this setting up the soil pipe I'll probably do a jump cut in a second oh that's good oh I remember this I used the hand soap uh, they got a little soap dispenser there I used that to lube up the uh, the pipe as I didn't have anything that I need with me as usual because I'm part of the problem with um, the way that I've set up my business and the way that I work and the reason perhaps why I don't upload videos very regularly is because I've kind of set myself up as an opportunist where I just I jump on jobs at very short notice and get them done to a high standard and that's you know unheard of you know it's the old thing if somebody if somebody is available next week you don't want them to come and work to your work for you and uh, I'm in two minds about it because yes it does bugger me up a lot and um, causes me a lot of grief but at the same time it's something that I'm kind of known for now and it's like oh if you need it doing now give Mr. Dangerous a call and um, it kind of messes me up to be honest but you got to cater for the client that you have and how many people today want things done now they just click on it like it's an Amazon order and they want it done as soon as and you know you see a lot of these firms that are doing very well these uh, you know small to medium sized firms that are just out there killing it and their their jobs are turned over quickly you know it's the quick and the dead out there obviously you can survive being mediocre and slow as I, I often do but you have to be able to when it's required or if you can do it all the time great um, perform at a speed that is you know somewhat bewildering to beginners and even still bewildering to me as a a, a newly non-beginner I suppose if I've been doing this for 800 and 
70 something days now um, so yeah and I think that's the way it's all going I think the uh, people are just going to want jobs done faster and faster I still would like it if I had clients and had things booked months in advance and that is hopefully what I'll eventually progress to high paid jobs booked months in advance I don't have to worry about it it's quoted, it's done however I think that's more of a fairy tale than anything but if uh, that's what you have and it works for you great, more power to you and I think even if I was at that point I would just employ more people and jump onto these short notice jobs anyway and um, that's all I've got to say about that really now here I am just literally just dropping that panel into position Oh no, I've already cut it off, so I've cut all that out. I edit these videos and then I come back to them to narrate them, so I don't really remember what it is I've done, which is uh, very professional, I know, but basically I lower the panel on and I cut a U-shape until the panel went all the way down and affixed to the solar pipe, as it should do, and that's all there really is to it. I could have bought one of those um, pieces of plastic that goes round the soil pipe and gives it a nice finish but I thought it would look a bit funny because you've got the the bottom of the panel is like a step and so it would be kind of sitting out there in space so I didn't, didn't end up going for it and also to be honest like nobody's going to care and then obviously you've got to drill the hole for the supply pipe working in buildings of this nature um, can be a little bit of a pain because like I had to get them to turn off the fire alarm so that I could solder and that was not me just going up to them and asking for it, it was a, an endeavour that had to be organised and you know, oh why didn't you use speed fit fittings or compression, I, t I use solder, that's what I like to use if I have the opportunity and if it means that I have to have a 20 minute conversation with somebody while I'm on their time so that they can turn the alarm off so I can do what they're paying me to do then I've got no problem with that the thing that I couldn't get done, which I would have liked to, was to be able to turn off the water as um, there are baller fixes back in the boxing there that are the original baller fixes for the toilet when the toilet was against the wall there before they decided to move the wall a foot forward and have the toilet reinstalled. And that's what I ended up using just to do this install because like, I couldn't cut off 50 staff and however many sick people from water it just wasn't feasible to do like they can't interrupt you know they can't close the surgery just because Mr Dangerous is installing a loo and so that's what we did um, if I did a lot more of this sort of work commercial work and m much more high demanding jobs where like things just cannot be down you know if it's a business or whatever then I probably would invest in a pipe freezing kit and to be fair I could have gone out and bought you know the hundred pound one with all the aerosol cans in it and and froze it up and done that but the problem I have with the pipe freezing things is that my primary method of joining anything is soldering it and uh, you can't solder a frozen pipe it's not gonna it's not gonna happen so that's one thing and yeah I could have used tech type fittings or speed fit fittings or compression fittings or anything else but of all the fittings that I've seen fail, and they all do fail. Don't I don't have. I'm not going to stand here and say solders don't fail, but they fail the least. And like I can, you know, do a job, turn the water on, come home and sleep at night, and not go around like a nervous, you know, uh, like a frightened animal touching all the pipes in case they leak, just fine. Whereas with plastic fittings and all this other stuff, I've seen them pop off and. It's like a lottery when you get to that level and um, that's just how I think of it. That's how it is in my head. It's, it's, it's prejudiced and it's, it's possibly wrong. You could, you could prove me wrong on it. But it's what's in my head and that's what I deal with. And uh, if soldering this pipe is how I sleep at night, then at this point that's what I'm going to do. Now, that being said, I am interested in looking into the, um, the butte line system. I've been researching it forever and talking about it forever as this thing that I was going to get into and um, I should be buying the starter pack and some pipes soon so I will have to see what that's like that seems to be the most compelling one simply because 
the fittings they are stocked by people you know some of the bigger omni evil corporations like city plumbing and all the rest of it like they can you know they can get hold of them next day or whatever and the gun doesn't cost a thousand pounds or roughly thereabouts to 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 acquire because it's not an electric gun it's just a manual crimp tool and you know those two things considered are right up my street and also the pipe seems to be a good quality i've handled some now in person and it's really 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 difficult to kink unlike normal speed fit pipe and like i've left plastic in walls before and you know like i've worked with, i've worked with most things and i would rather leave the butte line in the wall where i can't get to it than just normal speed fit fittings if i had to do it like that i mean there's you know like there was that warehouse job i did where to do that in copper would have been just insanity because I'd have had to have soldered together all these one foot long pieces. And, you know, I have the ability to recognize that and be like, oh, I guess I have to use plastic here. I'll use that and just have copper tail sticking out. But with the butte line stuff, you can get copper adapters and then it's like, oh, the one bit that isn't a crimped system is an actual soldered fitting. So in my mind, that's that's wonderful and then of course it also stops people from taking things apart as well and you do get meddlers that take things apart and uh, like I'm saying this job is just basically an exhibition of my of my backside as I'm working inside this bloody boxing I apologize for that but it, it is what it is you know this this could be truly the uh, the face of my organization as uh, this is probably what the, the angle that most people see me at all the time so there's that, so, you know, laugh at that as you will. Um, the only other thing I'd say is soldering in that boxing there is a little bit tricky, but it is what it is. And um, apart from that, that's it. It's a fairly standard toilet install. I was quite fortunate that these toilets are just straight. The screws just go straight through into the floor. So I didn't have to do the thing where you, where you put it in, mark the floor, drill the floor and then put the toilet back in and screw it up and you know realize that oh is a, is a little bit wrong and then to have to come, take it out again and rejig it and all the rest of it i just literally put the toilet in and just got my drill and just drilled straight through into the floor with the toilet in situ and just banged the plugs in and did the screws up and uh well obviously that's quite a bit faster would i recommend it with absolutely every install no because you know you're going to be installing different stuff and you know there's also a strong possibility that you're going to break the pan but i'm at the stage where you know they don't call me mr safety and uh, it's something i feel comfortable doing and that's that's just how i work so that's it um i was speaking to somebody the other day i'm sorry i was just seeing myself use the compression paste and um made me think of something, a conversation I had the other day that I was speaking to a, heat, a, a fellow and valued colleague, heating engineer, and he was saying that they, they, they don't allow paste anymore. And I couldn't think why on earth that was. They were saying something about the insurance companies not recognising it as a suitable material. And I just thought, if I can't use compression paste as the regulations demand that I use, because it's not a valid material then what do i do do i value invalidate my insurance policy or do i you know break the water regulations 1999 so i don't know somebody will have to confirm that with me um, i get a lot of good feedback on these videos so if somebody's watching if they could let us know um that would be great because i thought it was odd when he was saying it to me because i said to him well shit i use compression paste on everything so why why would it be bad and also why would it be bad it's it, it makes it less likely to leak so why would the insurance companies be against it i don't know i don't I, it might just be his provider um it might be that somebody in the office thinks it's um you know uh the um you know the fish paste or whatever it's called from you know the days of hemp and paste and they think that that, that we're putting that same stuff on you know because there's a lot of different pastes and compounds in our industry and they might think that we're putting one on that's meant for 
black iron fittings onto compression fittings and all the rest of it. That would be my guess. And they'd be like, oh, you can't do that because it's got linseed oil in it or whatever. And because they look the same, although they don't smell the same, but they look roughly the same. They both come in a pot. I think to the layman, they've basically decided that they're the same substance. That makes sense in my head. That makes more sense than the, you know, the, the collective uh, insurance body saying that I can't use compression paste on fittings. So, like I say, I'm going to eliminate the impossible until whatever's left is what I'm left with. Do you know what I mean? And, um, yes, there's not really a lot else to say about this install. Um, I'm just screwing it to the floor now. We'll run a bit of silicon around it, and there it is. It's um, not very exciting, obviously, it's a toilet install. However, it was a little bit of an odd of an odd job in that how it came about and all the rest of it. And to me, the, the, the utility of moving the toilet slightly further forward and having a wall that's easier to clean down I can't really see it versus using an aqua an aqua paneling product like um, you know the stuff I use for my shower enclosures and just fitting that to the wall and the two sides you know to the back wall and the two sides. I think that would have given them a better finish rather than paying a chippy to come in and build a little framework around it and all the rest of it. It would have been hard to put in around the soil stack, but that's really it. And even then they could have just boxed the soil stack in and panelled that and then had me come in and fit the toilet exactly where it was all pretty much onto the same pipework. And all I've needed to have done was change the pan connector. The panels, yeah, the panels I think would have cost about the same as uh, all this box work and all the rest of it. Um, it might have been a little bit more labour because they've got to do all the cutting in and all the rest of it rather than just building this straight wall and shelf here but I don't know that would have been a better job that would that would have been how I would have done it personally if I had planned this thing from start to finish but I don't actually get that opportunity very often and that's why when I do get the chance to plan an installation the whole way through I really do enjoy and relish it because I have total control over what's going on and it just gives me a lot less grief Another thing about this toilet, there's no screw holes to screw the pan, no, to screw the cistern to the wall. That was a little bit odd. So, I don't know if that's a thing on all, all Gebri toilets. I think that was a Gebri. I want to say it was. It might not have been. I know it had um, Gebri fittings inside it. But, to be honest, I can't really remember now. It was weeks ago. Um... I think I'm sticking my head in there because I'm just checking for leaks and just generally doing my due, di due diligence, flushing it several times and all the rest of it. It's a little bit hard to tell without the sound. And um, I think that's about it. That's all she wrote. Obviously, I've got to put the thing back together. And that is really all I have to say about that. I'll let this run till the end. And... Um, for now, I thank you all for watching. You take care, have a good day. And um, if you have any business inquiries, uh, please contact us with the info below on the video. I uh, do obviously commercial work and carry as discussed a higher public liability so I can do that sort of work for you. And um, just send us an email and see what we can do. Obviously, if I can't do the work myself, I probably know somebody who can and that's it. Feel free to contact us. Anyway, take care and uh, goodbye.
Bye.